It began in silence, where the sea turns black and the sky turns featureless. The bomber did not announce itself. It didn't have to. In an age of noisy power, the most dangerous thing is a whisper that crosses oceans and leaves no trace. That whisper had a name the world barely understood, B-21 Raider. And the night it moved, planners in Moscow and Beijing stared at their screens and felt something rare in modern strategy. Surprise, the story started years earlier, in windowless rooms and digital wind tunnels, when the US Air Force swore it would build a stealth bomber differently this time. Engineers designed the jet first as a living software platform, open systems architecture, so it could absorb new sensors and weapons the way a phone absorbs apps, with upgrades measured in code, not decades. The target wasn't just stealth on day one, it was adaptability. On day 1000, the Air Force's own fact sheet said it plainly, design it to evolve as the threat evolves. Roll back to Palmdale, California, December 2nd, 2022. The hangar doors slid open. A pale flying wing rolled forward, quiet, unreal, and the first new American stealth bomber in three decades. By November 10th, 2023, it flew. Then again in January 2024, settling into a rhythm of test sorties that said more than any press release ever could. And in September 2025, a second B-21 joined flight test at Edwards Air Force Base, doubling the tempo and telling rivals exactly what they feared. This wasn't a prototype. It was a production line warming up. Inside the Pentagon, another decision took shape. The bomber wouldn't be a boutique marvel like the B-2. It would be a fleet, one that was large enough to matter every day. The initial plan called for at least 100 Raiders to replace aging B-1s and B-2s. But by 2025, the tone changed. Strategic Command quietly pushed that figure toward 145. Quantity wasn't pride, it was credibility. Cost made that credibility possible. The B-2 had cost like a cathedral. It was glorious, rare, and destructive. The B-21 had to be practical art. It had to be stealth at scale. Its unit cost was kept near a top-tier fighter. After the first flight, production received the official go-ahead, and Congress began approving multi-billion dollar annual lines, roughly $5 billion per year, not for one aircraft, but for an ecosystem that would keep the bomber alive and evolving. It wasn't luxury spending, it was insurance for the 21st century. Northrop Grumman even took financial hits to accelerate the line, absorbing losses now to buy speed later. Analysts frowned at the accounting, generals smiled at the clock. They knew this was big if they could pull this off, because time, not money, is the rarest asset in an arms race. But hardware alone doesn't rattle adversaries. Method does. The B-21 rewrites the first night of any major war. You don't open with fireworks and tank columns. You open with what isn't seen, a jet that erases the enemy's eyes before the rest of the force takes its first step. It doesn't just strike. It kills coordination. Radars, satellites, and command posts blink out before they know they've been found. Knock out the eyes and the arms of any military flail uselessly in the dark. Russia had planned for this. At least, it thought it had. It poured billions into S-400s, S-500s, and overlapping radar webs that could, on paper, detect ghosts. China layered its own HQ-9s and HQ-9s, adding surveillance networks that claimed to watch even stealthy objects. But on every map they drew, the same flaw pulsed quietly. Timing. A radar that reacts half a second too late isn't a defense system, it's a target. And the B-21's mission was to steal time itself. That theft happens invisibly. The Raider lifts off with a mission plan written by analysts and rewritten by itself in flight. Computing paths that curve around weather, emissions, and patrols. Every second, its onboard AI refines the invisible. The jet doesn't avoid threats. It anticipates them. It opens corridors that shouldn't exist, makes impossible routes routine, and then disappears before anyone can even declare contact. Its stealth isn't just physical. It's temporal. It's gone before you realize it was there. Meanwhile, Russia and China scrambled for answers. New low-frequency radars, infrared networks, satellite constellations, all promising to see the unseen. But seeing isn't striking. Catching a whisper doesn't mean you can contain it. Even if a radar reveals the bomber, it still has to lock, track, 
and hand off to a missile, all in seconds. And the B-21 has already disappeared by then. Every Raider is a demonstration that reaction time can't outrace evolution. The shock wasn't loud, and it unfolded in silence. In the briefings, which neither Russia nor China wanted to hold. In Moscow, planners stared at walls of red circles representing radar coverage and realized too late that none overlapped tightly enough. Their impenetrable sky was full of breathing room. In Beijing, analysts compared satellite schedules and test range data, wondering if the H-20, China's long-promised stealth bomber, would even fly before the B-21 reached squadron strength. And suddenly, China's timeline felt late. When your adversary is already flying your dream aircraft, your own ambition becomes yesterday's headline, and billions go running down the drain. The B-21 didn't need to announce superiority. Its existence rewrote the strategy. It forced Russia and China to divert resources, re-aim satellites, move radars, develop counter-stealth sensors, and all this just to chase something they couldn't predict. It turned offense into defense without firing a shot. And that is where the real weapon lies. For the United States, every flight became a message. A message each test wasn't just about data. It was a theater played out in classified skies. The Pentagon didn't brag. It let the silence speak. And it certainly spoke volumes. Intelligent satellites from three nations repositioned to watch. All they saw was runway heat and hangar shadows. It was almost like chasing a ghost. The less America said, the more Moscow and Beijing imagined. Back home, engineers refined what they called sustainability stealth. Unlike the B-2, whose delicate skin demanded constant attention, the B-21's composite coating could be serviced quickly in the field. Its panels were designed for access, not just ceremony. It could launch again in hours, not days. That practicality changed everything. It meant the Raider wasn't a museum piece, but a workhorse, one that you can fly every day. Just your mere existence becomes a deterrence, and the jet's dual capability deepened that deterrence. It can carry conventional payloads, or, if required, nuclear gravity weapons it doesn't advertise which mission it's flying. That confusion keeps your enemies on their toes. It means every detected test flight, if they can detect it at all, must be treated as the worst case scenario. That single layer of uncertainty changes how enemies posture, deploy, and sleep. It's the psychology of silence. Across the Pacific, Wargame analysts modeled what a B-21-led strike campaign would look like. The results terrified them, not because of destruction, but because of speed. Critical infrastructure fell within minutes, not hours. Radar networks blinked off like streetlights in a storm. And once the first gap opened, it widened exponentially. Defense lines drawn over decades vanished overnight. That's when the term strategic shock started appearing in classified reports. Because the moment you realize your shield has holes, your sword suddenly feels smaller. Yet the bomber's power isn't brute force, it's composure. It doesn't need to scream across the sky or light up radars. It wins by existing inside your blind spot and staying there. Without you even having a whiff, it's there to begin with. That's exactly what shocked China and Russia. The B-21 isn't about warfighting, it's about time control. It decides when a battle starts and when it ends. And no missile, no radar, no speech can match that. By late 2025, with multiple B-21s flying, America had quietly built a rhythm. Factories pushed, bases prepared shelters, and air crews practiced launches under the cover of night. Every takeoff was another rehearsal for a scenario no one wanted, but everyone planned for. Deterrence had found its soundtrack again, the soft hiss of a stealth engine that promised everything and revealed nothing. The bomber didn't crash into headlines with fire and fury. It slipped into the bloodstream of global power. It was quiet, persistent, and unstoppable. And that's when the real shock spread. In Russia, Officers asked, 
What if the bomber bypasses the grid before the grid even knows? In China, strategists realized their own H-20S were still drawings and wind tunnel dust, while the B-21 was already in the sky. When your opponent's future has already taken flight, your plans become history without even starting. Modern war doesn't start with explosions. It starts with realization. The B-21 doesn't threaten. It just simply reminds. It reminds enemies that control of the sky isn't claimed, it's maintained. And it reminds every rival that in the next conflict, the first move won't be seen. It will be felt somewhere. On a night without moonlight, a raider lifts from a runway. No spotlights, no fanfare, just motion. Its wings slice into the dark like a blade through ink. Below, radar operators in two different continents stare at blank screens, adjusting knobs, recalibrating, waiting for something that isn't there. Just waiting. And sometimes, waiting is the worst sound in defense. At the objective, it finishes what it came for. No bright explosions, no TV drama, just precision. One target, one impact, one missing heartbeat in an enemy network. The B-21 doesn't need to make noise. Silence is the signature. And that silence is exactly what terrifies. In war rooms across the world, generals revise doctrines, budgets, and egos. Because every time the raider flies, the old math dies. Speed, range, payload, stealth. All those used to be separate categories. Now they're one thanks to the B-21. For Russia and China, that revelation hurts. They built their security on the assumption that geography would protect them, that sheer size and layered defenses would buy time. The raider deletes that assumption. It can reach anywhere, undetected, and return home before their intelligence agencies can confirm it was ever here. You can't defend every sky when the threat comes from nowhere. As the world wakes up to that truth, budgets shift, alliances tighten, and an invisible countdown ticks behind closed doors. Because when a weapon can move faster than politics, every decision suddenly feels slow. That's the real shock, not the hardware, not the stealth, but the realization that the United States once again holds the initiative and intends to keep it. And somewhere tonight, under the same indifferent stars, a whisper crosses an ocean and leaves no trace. And that's why, as dawn rises over Moscow and Beijing, two governments quietly update their maps, just to erase the places they no longer trust to be safe. Because the B-21 raider didn't just change how wars will be fought, it changed how nations will think about them.